Traditional pregnancy guides don't prepare moms for spina bifida, rare genetic disorders, cerebral palsy, or Down syndrome. What to expect when you're expecting guides parents through their baby's birth, but not the lifetime of work that will follow for a special needs child. Thankfully, at least in Virginia, there's a nonprofit committed to just that. In 2021, we featured the nonprofit Children's Assistive Technology Service, commonly known as CATS. With insurance companies often denied the equipment needed, CATS provides free refurbished walkers, wheelchairs, standards, and other assistive technologies to help special needs children reach their full potential and perhaps just as importantly, ease the burden of their caregivers. Here in 2024, Buzz is honored to revisit this nonprofit as it celebrates its 10th anniversary. We traveled the Commonwealth to visit the inspiring individuals serving and served by CATS, starting with its headquarters near Roanoke to meet its board president. I'm Bill Miranda, and I'm the current board chair for CATS, Children's Assistive Technology Service. I've been on the board for three years, but I've been aware of CATS for a longer period of time than that. I'm a retired pediatric orthopedic surgeon. I practiced in Roanoke for almost 25 years. Career eventually took Dr. Marinda to Pennsylvania, and it wasn't until a golfing trip back in Roanoke when a playing partner mentioned he volunteered for this organization called CATS. And I was blown away. It was what I had wished for when I worked here before, and actually what I wished for in Pennsylvania. So I got in contact four years before I moved back to Virginia with Kathy Cummins, who started CATS. Kathy was a physical therapist in the DC area, and she saw the challenges facing families who had children with very significant handicaps. Those kids all function best with assistive devices, electric wheelchairs, standing frames, seating systems, um, gate trainers, equipment that is remarkably expensive, it requires maintenance, and kids outgrow it. And so families struggle to get it and to maintain it because insurance companies are reluctant to pay for anything that expensive. Some of this stuff can cost almost as much as a used car. Even families with the best insurance that there is the insurance all comes with restrictions on how often equipment can be replaced. And if they have a rule that you can't get a new wheelchair for two years, it doesn't matter if your three-year-old doubles in size in two years, they still say no. Routinely, a new prescription for a wheelchair generally takes a year for approval and construction and repair normally takes at least six or eight months. And it can be something very simple, but even something very simple completely derails this child from their progress. And these are kids who require a lot to keep up. They don't have a reserve that lets them catch up. And so just being out of commission for a number of months doesn't just slow their progression, it can derail their progression. In 2023, we provided devices to 1,200 children and a total of a little over 1,300 pieces of equipment. And the value of that equipment is just a bit over $2 million. When that mom turns to us or turned to me for help, I was so enthused to be on that team. We want, to, we want to provide all the support we can to parents like that, to let them do their best and let their child do their best. That's a special reward. Birgit's here. Our next stop, the bucolic Bedford home of Avon Alford, where we met her oldest of three daughters, Bergen, who was born with cerebral palsy caused by a gene mutation. Avon and her husband, both former college athletes, 
struggled not only with the physical demands of caring for their beloved Bergen, but the emotional and psychological challenges as well. Uh, that life for a long time was very overwhelming. Um, constant therapies, getting used to the round-the-clock care of, you know, um, meds and like all I wanted to be was her parent. I was getting very overwhelmed and frustrated with the fact that I had to do so many other things. All I wanted to do was sit on the couch and just snuggle her, but instead I could only think about all the different things that we should be doing to work towards her therapy goals or her speech goal, you know, like there was just always something else that I should be doing with her. And the weight of not doing those things with her was heavy. The risk was her future, but at the moment, all I wanted to do was just be her mom. Avon's first equipment frustration resulted from needing a bigger chair in which to bathe her daughter. The next thing she needed was a wheelchair or an adaptive stroller. And so that we actually went, at the time, Katz was operating out of a um, storage unit down in Rocky Mount. And so I went with the physical therapist to go pick up this piece of equipment, and that's where I met Kathy Cummins. And it just blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. We're, like, going to leave here with this piece of equipment. We just waited six months for a gate trainer and had to drive all the way to Charlottesville to get it. Like, I get to leave here with this stroller today? Just, yeah, absolutely. And it's free, and there's no paperwork, and there's no, like, what? This is too easy. And I told her at that point, please, if you ever need anything, let me know. I knew the second I had my first experience with cats that I didn't want to live in a world where cats didn't exist. I needed cats to be able to properly care for my child. Like any mom with a firstborn special needs child, Avon wrestled with whether to have more kids. Selfishly, I think my thought process behind that was like, look, I'm not going to get, I don't, I'm not going to be able to, you know, you're not going to walk her down the aisle, babe. I'm not going to be able to take her to pick out a prom dress, you know. If, if we're so distraught and upset and sad about missing out on these things, why don't we just make sure we don't have to miss out on these things, you know? And we knew we wanted other children, but this is, this is what's going to, it's crazy. Bergen should be like, makes me cry, but we didn't know how bad we needed them. And I knew as soon as Charlotte was born that she was safe. You know, we didn't know at the time whether the gene mutation, they knew that neither my husband or I were carriers of the gene mutation. It was a complete de novo or whatever they call it. It was completely random. Um, so there was a chance or so we thought that it could happen again. And I knew right away when she was born that she didn't have it. I knew it and we did a lot of blood work and about a month later, they called us to tell us that she was in the clear. And even though I knew it, that phone call was just, you know, so good to hear. And she healed all of the holes in our heart. Charlotte and Addie are so lucky to have Bergen as an older sister. They, they also have a perspective of life on life that not very many people get, let alone children, get to have. At seven and five, they have empathy, you know, and they understand that the world does not revolve around them, that there are people in this world that at times are more important, whose needs are more important to theirs. She wouldn't have been able to go to school this year if it weren't for cats. We ordered her a new wheelchair uh, on March 14th, so five months ago, yeah, tomorrow, and we still don't have it. My dream of her to be completely included in society is something that CATS helps to facilitate. Without a wheelchair, you don't have access to a community. Being a, a full-time caregiver and a parent is an incredibly arduous task. It's very overwhelming, you know, to know that this is my life for the rest of my life, you know. Um, I will be caring for Bergen until I no longer physically can. So to have the time to myself to do whatever it is I want you know, to do with that time or just to take a breath 
allows me to be a better caregiver to her and a better parent to her. And I feel incredibly grateful that, you know, she has. Without cats, uh, Bergen would have missed out on a lot of life. Without cats, um, I may not last as long being her caregiver, you know. Um, without cats, we could lose access to our community. Without cats, you know, it doesn't feel like anybody truly cares about us the way that cats does. From Bedford, we headed east. We stopped in Richmond to visit one of Cat's volunteer sites. The others are in the Roanoke headquarters and in Hampton Roads, where volunteers devote countless hours receiving and refurbishing used mobility devices. I'm Brad Faltemeyer. I am a volunteer here at Cat's in Richmond, and I am a retired school teacher, taught special education for 32 years, and I've been volunteering for about five years. At this location, just like our other two locations, equipment is brought in, donated to us from families. Then we have to inspect it, which is what Kenny's doing over there and Bob's doing over here. We have to check out the equipment, make sure it's viable. Then we clean it and we repair it if needed and we give it away. That's our mission. I've always liked fixing things and I think Bob's that way. Bob loves to fix things and, and we, we like the, the concept of a circular economy where things that are being used and then they're done with their use, they don't go to waste. So this equipment without organizations like CATS would probably go to waste because there's no network for recycling them. So we're, we're not even recycling, we're repurposing them. They're just going right back into their same use, which is very rewarding. But what's really rewarding is when, when you get to meet some of the kids, which is rare that we get to meet some of the kids, but we do sometimes get to meet some of the kids and you know see the smiles on their faces or Sometimes it's just the joy of the parents and the appreciation of the parents, which is often the case. A great deal of appreciation. That's very, very rewarding. We continued east to the Hampton Road city of Chesapeake, where we met Heather Thomas and her mother, Mary Swears, as they prepared to celebrate the fourth birthday of Heather's son, Paul. You big boy. Oh my goodness. The joy of the day was in stark contrast to the anxiety of 2020 when, in the throes of COVID, Heather had to navigate alone the doctor's visit in which she learned her 24-week-old fetus had spina bifida, or a hole in his spine. Oh, just thinking about the journey, it's... You go, you know, you want like a healthy, everyone wants a healthy baby, you know, nothing to go wrong. And, you know, you get the call that there's something wrong and you're by yourself. Not, I mean, you are, you're by yourself. It was hard. It was a lot. A and lot. Then she had to have an amniocentesis that, that day, day, all by herself. They, she did the amniocentesis when she got out to the car she collapsed in my arms and just sobbed. And it, it was, but it was like, not that we wanted the perfect child, but we wanted the perfect opportunity for this child. And it's been a fight from day one, which we're up for the fight, aren't oh, yeah. we? Yes. Whatever it takes, but we've had to fight doctors. We've had to fight, you know, specialists. We've had, it's, it hasn't stopped. It's been a fight. So it takes us an army. It does. And we've been with him together. Like we're a multi-generational home here now. And we've been together with him since day one. A risky in utero surgery to close Paul's spinal column was the first of many medical milestones for the family. But when it came to getting the equipment to meet those moments, be it a stander or mobile wheelchair, Katz was always there. Insurance companies take like six months at least to get you the equipment that you need. So, you know, we would have loved to have, like we got, you know, um, asked for a floor seat for him to be able to sit up straight. And 
we didn't get it till he was already out, had already outgrown it. And um, so by that time I had, you know, it was like, we needed this six months ago. So the blessing of cats was that you can get the equipment that you need, but the time that you need it so that you could help your child grow, really. Um, it's allowed him to be outside when we're outside with the family, when we were visiting, you know, aunts and uncles and cousins. And at school, you know, Katz was able to provide a walker, a Nimba walker for him to use at school. So, you know, be like another kid in the class because of Katz. So I think it helps them feel like a part of the group. Mommy, can I go get it? We'll get Morgan downstairs. I wanna bring it up. I mean, we're a family of faith, so we definitely lean on our faith a lot, but it would be difficult because Paul would not be able to move around as much as he can now. Um, he would have to be carried or um, be delayed, and now he probably wouldn't even be walking right now because he would have to lean on other people to help him do it himself, which is okay, but it's also hard on the body, it's hard emotionally. Cats gives the kids the ability to like look forward to the future and to say, oh, I will be able to do these things because I have the equipment that I need. Our last stop was the home of Brittany Wilson, where we met physical therapist Missy Rose, who also serves as Cats' clinical director ensuring special needs children are matched and fitted with the proper equipment. Children like Brittany's three-year-old son, AJ. So I started with AJ when he was about six months old through early intervention. And um, when we first started, he wasn't really making eye contact. He wasn't rolling. He wasn't holding his head up. Um, and it was really scary because we were even still just working on him getting general range of motion. Um, but the more he participated and he saw that I was there to play, because physical therapy for kids should be playtime, um, then he realized he could trust me. And once he started trusting me, then I looked into cats to see what kind of equipment we could use to help him want to move. Because moving is scary, because it was hard, and sometimes it hurt. So we had to make it as motivating and as fun as possible. And couldn't have done that without the equipment. And so I just feel really lucky that I have the best of both worlds. So I can work with him with the equipment and we have access to the equipment where insurance companies would never have approved um, as many of the pieces as, as he borrowed throughout the years. The joy radiating from Brittany's face long ago replaced the shock she suffered in 2021 during her seemingly routine pregnancy. Okay, let's close the door. Uh, a day I would never, ever forget. It was during my 24-week scan. I was excited because we get to find out the gender. It was during COVID, so I had to go by myself. My husband was in the car downstairs. I went up, I was so excited. Uh, we had a gender reveal planned. They did the ultrasound. Um, the lady didn't give me any signs. I'm just on cloud nine, you know, laying on my back, you know, cold gel on my stomach, just excited, right? She doesn't tell me the gender because we were having a party. She put it in a note. After the ultrasound, we meet, I met with the doctor. And then the doctor, I remember she looked at me very frank. And she said, um, there was something on the scan. I'm concerned. Um, she didn't like say it to make me very scared, but she said it in a way that she was serious. Her baby had hydrocephaly, a neurological disorder caused by an abnormal buildup of fluid within the brain, along with Dandy Walker syndrome, in which the cerebellum doesn't develop normally. And they gave us termination options. Yeah, it was, it was hard. Um, and I felt him kick. <laughs> I felt him kick and I said, I cannot terminate this baby. I felt him kick and it's not my role to decide if he lives or not. If we go full term and he doesn't, then that's God's will. I'm not gonna take that away from God. I'm not God. Whew. Um, so we kept, we kept him and um, none of us regret it. As difficult as it can be sometimes, we had to adjust our expectations you know, um, I remember getting so frustrated this one time 
I had him playing with applesauce. He was maybe one years old. And he wouldn't bring his hands to his mouth. And I'm like, it, it's simple, it's tasty, do it. You know, I remember being so frustrated in that moment. I had to adjust my expectations. And ever since I did that, I'm so proud of that little boy. I'm so proud of him, you know. He's gone far beyond what those doctors predicted, you know. He's an odds defeater. We started using CATS equipment, I would say around one years old, um, because we've seen that he was motivated. He was so motivated to move. Of course, he has his delays, um, but they were able to access equipment so that we can see what to order through insurance. And so that was very helpful for us because we can't waste money ordering equipment that he's not able to use or that he's, you know, uh, he's not ready for yet. And so I'm so appreciative of my therapist who, who took a chance on him and had hope and, and she brought the equipment in and we try it out. And he, at first, sometimes he, he wouldn't cling to it, but he would tolerate it. And so we accepted that. And then now he's just rolling around and he's motivated and he wants to use it. Um, it's, it's been very, very helpful. And then when he outgrows it, I can exchange it, to, you know, so someone else can use that same equipment and I can use something that he's advanced to. So it's just a really awesome program. He just, he has a lot of light to share. He, he's a happy kid despite his differences. He's so happy despite all the surgeries he's had, all the doctor's appointments, he's a happy kid. And so why should we complain? Brittany also debated having more children, but now basks in the blessing of little Trinity, who shares many milestones with her big brother. So when he was trying to sit, she was trying to sit, and they're both like wobbling and falling over together. <laughs> and now they're both talking and saying mama, and, and he, she was learning from him, and now he's learning from her, and he's more motivated to walk around, and he's in this mobile prone. She was in her walker. They're colliding with each other, so it's really beautiful to watch each milestone. And I don't compare them. They're in their own lanes, their own race. And I'm just thankful that I can accept that. Without cats, he would be sitting on a couch or sitting or laying. And, and that's not working on his skills. That's not propelling him forward for his potential. I do believe my son is going to walk, talk, and thrive. I do. I strongly believe that. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. It, and I'm, not, I'm crazy enough to even admit it. That's crazy, right? It is. Yeah, it's, it's being a mama. Yeah. In our 2021 episode, we highlighted Kat's biggest fundraiser of the year, Hallow Wheels, in which special needs families transform their child's mobility devices into spectacular, make that spooktacular, Halloween costumes. Photos are posted online, and for just a dollar a vote, Anyone is invited to pick their favorite costume. Our good friends at Five Points Creative donated a website to the cause, hallowwheels.org. And for this 10th anniversary, reconnected us with EZ Mobility Solutions to give the big fundraiser more buzz. I started doing ramps in early 2000, and uh, one particular ramp, the woman was really eager to get out on it. And when I finally said, ma'am, just wait just a second, she said, oh, honey, you don't understand. I haven't been outside on my own in two years. I haven't had the sun hit my face, and I just want to go get my own mail. And it was then that I really realized that what I was doing really made an impact. And what these devices do for people, whether it be a ramp or a scooter or a wheelchair, what freedom it gives people to start living their lives fully. So. We have happily and proudly supported Hollow Wheels over the last seven years, and we're really excited about the program. We think it's a great thing. So this year, we're going to donate $4,000 of our TV budget to educate people about what Hollow Wheels is and about what CATS is, and we're really excited about this. Hollow Wheels is our most important fundraiser, and these dollars go directly to kids in Virginia to make a tangible difference in their life. We believe that CATS has had an important impact in Virginia over the last 10 years. 
but we see an even greater impact over the next 10. There are more children that we need to serve us. And these dollars will help us do that. Thank you.